The craziest project man has ever dreamed of has been floating over our heads for more than 20 years, the International Space Station. There's nothing else like it in human history. The size of a football field, the ISS is the biggest man-made object ever created. It travels above us at a speed of 28,000 kilometers an hour. It's a unique construction, a permanent fixture in space. How were engineers and astronauts able to put together this 400-ton machine? It's the, the most complex engineering building that we have ever constructed as humankind. The ISS is the only weightless space station in existence and an incredible tool at the service of humanity. It's a huge success and down to the collaboration of many different countries. It's thanks to the ISS that everyone's focus is now on Mars. It's the place that allows us to imagine the future. It's a tool that allows us to fly further, higher, and faster. The space station is really our first step on our further journey into space. Space is an extreme and hostile place. Mankind has had to demonstrate incredible ingenuity and rise to huge technological challenges to allow astronauts to live there, almost as if they're living on Earth. Inside, it's small, like a telephone booth, but it's pretty cozy. How does the space station work? How do they repair it? How does one breathe inside it? Where does it get its energy from? It's filled with bags of rubbish. I need to crouch right down because there's not much room. I'll try and show you. We are going to take a trip backstage on board the International Space Station on a guided tour in the company of those who know it best, the astronauts. If, if I had the chance to go tomorrow, I would go back tomorrow. It's such an incredible place. Mankind has always dreamed of traveling into space, leaving the Earth, and discovering new horizons. This crazy quest has gradually become a reality. But the dream hasn't stopped there. And to go even further, they built a structure over our heads, 400 kilometers above the planet, the International Space Station. A steel monster some 108 meters long and 73 meters wide. It required the expertise of American, Russian, European, Canadian, and Japanese space agencies to put this incredible scientific laboratory into orbit. Like an enormous construction set, each piece was designed and constructed on Earth before being transported into space. It took 10 years to assemble in a challenge that went way beyond international borders. For almost 20 years now, 200 men and women from different countries have dedicated themselves in turn to live and work on board the International Space Station. Of course, the station has become our baby. It's our favorite toy and we never get bored of it. It's our home, our place of work. Reaching the space station is no simple feat. It involves a long voyage on Russian Soyuz spacecraft. After a 48-hour flight, the Soyuz is within 400 meters of the ISS. The first thing that you see is a, is a bright dot like a star that is showing up somewhere on the, on the display. As you get closer and closer, you see, see a little bit this dot growing. Then you see the first, the wings, the big solar wings of the, of the space station. Like explorers discovering a new world, each time they approach the station, even the most experienced astronauts can but marvel at the spectacle. It's really huge. You've seen it so often in photos, images or video. But you can't believe that human beings were capable of constructing this huge station in orbit in space. Then out my window, I could see solar arrays and thermal radiators and pieces of the station that kind of extend out into that corridor that we're traveling in and they just get closer and closer and closer and, and fill the view of your window. You actually feel like you're being engulfed by the space station as you're coming in on a Soyuz. 
I've been to the station three times, and each time my feelings were the same. Admiration. Admiration for the size of it. It's truly gigantic. It looks wrong. I mean, it looks to your eye, there's something alien about everything you see. You will see any beam or post or module extremely well lit on one side, over bright, kind of, you know, harsh, harsh lighting. And then the right as you get roll around to the side that is not directly facing the sun, it is black. Range is three. Uh, the roll has stabilized. There is no roll now. There is no roll deviation. We're approaching really nicely. Yes, confirm. And probe retraction confirmed. Docking confirmed. A textbook arrival for the brand new Soyuz MSO-1 spacecraft docking confirmed at 11.06 p.m. Central Time. You're going from this incredibly cramped uh, Soyuz through a hatch system, which is actually even more cramped. Once you open that, you still have the two hatches, uh, the ISS hatch and the Soyuz hatch, to get past. So you're actually moving through an even tighter little space uh, and you know, sort of being pulled in by your crewmates you're coming through a birthing canal and being aided by the doctors on the other side to pull you across uh, and into the main volume of the space station. And uh, the hatch now opening. And when you leave the little ship and enter the huge station, you're overcome with emotion. You discover this huge space. You recognize some faces. It's really moving. Of course, it's overwhelming. The total volume of the ISS is comparable to that of a five-room house, and it was designed to be home to seven astronauts. Each one stays there for an average of six months. From their very first moments on board, and despite their years of training, new arrivals are often disconcerted, because they have to learn to live in zero gravity, where there is no up or down. You're in three dimensions, and you're using a module that is up there, on the left, on the right, below, in front, behind. It's a bit complicated to get your bearings in the beginning. Your brain sometimes processes the image completely different because the fluid in your inner ear is sending a completely different message to your brain. You're looking down the tunnel, and it's almost like you're looking up a building. You know what I mean? I made a right turn into the service module, and then suddenly I stopped, because suddenly I couldn't recognize where I was. And I thought to myself, I can't believe I'm already lost on board the International Space Station, especially because I've spent hundreds of hours training in a model of it here on the ground. But um, luckily, one of the more experienced astronauts could see that I looked a little bit confused, and he told me, it's because you're standing on the ceiling. As soon as I flipped over and got my feet back on the floor again, it was as if everything fell into place and I could suddenly recognize where I was. The astronauts find their way around thanks to a marking system that shows them up and down. The absence of gravity also gives them a 360-degree working environment. Um, of course, most of these modules you'll see they have four sides, uh, and they're put together. That way we could sort of walk, work on a flat plane, either a wall, a floor, another wall, or the ceiling. But, you know, again, all you have to do is turn yourself and your reference changes. This almost complete lack of gravity presents its own problems for the human body. We are not used to function in, in, in microgravity, so uh, we have too much blood pressure in our head and the, the blood shift is happening. So that's why you see astronauts certainly in the beginning when they fly to space that they have kind of a swollen head with, uh, with red uh, puffy face. 
The astronauts' faces look a little puffy because their blood flows differently. The blood doesn't flow as well to the lower part of the body and accumulates in the chest and head. The veins around the neck and face swell up. So naturally, the change of blood flow presents some problems. So you actually feel that inside your head, you feel this increase in intracranial pressure, and it causes some stuffiness in the nose as well, sometimes a bit of, uh, a, bit of a dull headache as well. But, uh, and that can actually last for a, a few weeks um, as, you, as your body adapts and adjusts to microgravity.